Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB, and today Apple has released iOS 18.2. It's always an exciting day when Apple releases new software, and I'm really excited to show you everything new in this update. So I'm gonna break this video into two parts. The first part is gonna be features that are for every single iPhone user, and the second part is going to be all of the new features for Apple intelligence. So let's go ahead, roll the intro, and jump right in. The first new feature in iOS 18.2 is we have an all new design for the mail application. Apple was previewing this new design, but they haven't implemented it until today. So if you go ahead and open up mail, you'll notice that we have some colorful tabs at the top of the screen, which is going to make organizing your email a little bit better. So the first inbox is primary. This is what the device believes is important emails that you have to see first. The next tab is going to be transactions. So any receipts, orders, and delivery confirmations. This next one will be news, subscriptions, and social. So if you're subscribed to any newsletters, they'll show up in here. This next one is pretty much the junk tab. I never look at this one. This is special offers and deals. Pretty much anything that's in here belongs in your junk folder. And then finally at the far right, we have all mail. So if you don't like looking at any of these tabs, you can simply click on all mail and it's gonna show every single email in your inbox. Also, if you just wanna jump between the primary inbox and all mail, there is a pretty nice swipe gesture you can do. So if you find yourself constantly going between all mail and primary, all you have to do is a swipe at the top of the screen like this, and it's gonna bring you between those inboxes just like that. There's also a pretty cool new UI update in iOS 18.2, and that has to do with the icons inside of settings. So these settings icons are now going to be adaptive based on what you have your home screen icons set to. So here, if I just go into dark mode, for example, and then go into settings, you'll see that the icons have now adapted to dark mode, but it also goes one step further. So if I press and hold, click on edit, and then customize, if I set my icons to this color, and then go into settings, you can see that the icons have adapted as you can see there. So this is pretty cool, and I think it makes the system look a little bit more unified. This next feature is inside of the Find My application. Now I've already jumped to the page because I don't want to show my location, but when you're in Find My and you click on one of your items and then scroll down, there is an all new option you can click on right here that says share item location. And when you click on this, it says you can share your AirTag location with an airline or a trusted person. So this is pretty cool. I believe some airlines are gonna opt into this and it allows you to share your item's location with that airline. So for example, if you're going on a trip, you can track the location of your bag if it has an AirTag in it and if that airline is opting into this program. We also have an update for Safari. Safari now supports live activities for downloads happening in the background. So if I go to Safari and click on an example file and download it, you can see if I click on download and then go home, it now lives in the island and it can show my progress for that download. And then obviously, just like any other island activity, you can minimize it to see it smaller just like this. And if you wanna see a bit more information, you can either press and hold to preview it like that or click on it to jump right to Safari. And then if you're wondering, in Safari, all of your downloads live at the bottom. So if you click on the tab bar right here and then downloads, this is where you can find all of your downloads. We also have a few new options for the camera control. So this is exclusively for the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Pro. The first one is we now have a half press. So this is going to make your iPhone feel a lot more like a classic point and shoot camera where you could do a half press to focus and a full press to take the photo. To find this, you wanna go into settings, then scroll down and click on camera and then camera control. And from here, you can see we have light press. And if you turn on auto exposure, auto focus lock right here, as soon as you do a half press, it's going to focus. And then when you do a full press, it's gonna take that photo. So a half press just like this, you can see the yellow box on my screen, and then I can take the photo just like that. So this feels a lot more tactile, and it definitely feels a lot more like those point and shoot cameras that you used to bring on vacation way back in like 2010. I think this makes taking photos a lot better on my iPhone, and I'm definitely gonna be leaving this feature on. And then we also have another feature for camera control inside of settings. However, it's actually inside of display and brightness settings. No idea why Apple does this, but they love to make settings very confusing. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of display and brightness options, you can see there's a new toggle that says require screen on. So if you have this turned on, the camera control button will not work if your phone is locked. 
This is an all new feature that by default is turned on and I shut it off because I always want to be able to turn on my camera really quickly. So if I take my phone out of my pocket and I haven't unlocked it yet, one press of the camera control is going to open it just like this. And iOS 18.2 also has an all new feature which goes in conjunction with the iPhone mirroring feature found in Sequoia. So this mirroring now works when you're using an iPhone hotspot. Before you had to be on the same Wi-Fi network. But if you are using your iPhone's hotspot on your Mac, iPhone mirroring is still going to work the way you expect it to. We also have a new feature in iOS 18.2 called volume limit. So if you go into settings, then click on sounds and haptics. If you scroll down, there's a new option here for the built-in speaker to limit the volume. If you turn this on, you can choose to limit the maximum volume. This can uh, help protect your hearing if you want to turn this on. And another new feature to do with volume is for the now playing on the lock screen. So if you're playing music, you're familiar in iOS 18 with this player right here, but you'll notice that there is no volume. Apple has actually brought back the volume slider to this menu, and I'll show you exactly how you can turn this on. So you want to go into settings, then click on accessibility, then scroll down, then you want to click on audio visual, and then right here, turn on always show volume control. And just like this, now whenever you are playing music on your lock screen, you're always gonna see that volume slider at the bottom of the widget. Another small update in iOS 18.2 is for viewing videos inside of the Photos app. So you'll notice here, whenever I click in and out of the viewer, the video itself doesn't uh, slide back and forward. Uh, if you go ahead and try this on your iPhone right now on iOS 18.1, you'll see what I mean. Uh, when you click on the screen, the video kind of gets bigger and smaller. But here in iOS 18.2, the size of the video doesn't change when you click on the screen. And then finally, we have an all new widget inside of Control Center, which allows you to type to Siri. So for me, I don't really know if this is gonna be very useful because you can simply double tap the bottom of your screen to type to Siri. But here inside of Control Center, there is an all new widget that allows you to do the exact same thing. So those were all of the basic updates in iOS 18.2. Those are going to be on every iPhone. Now it's time for the features that you're waiting for. This is everything new in Apple Intelligence. So Apple Intelligence is supported on every iPhone 16 model and the iPhone 15 Pro. Apple Intelligence wasn't really that exciting upon initial release and this iOS 18.2 update is what people have been waiting for because there are a lot of really cool features coming with Apple Intelligence in this update and I'm really excited to show you every single one of them. The first one has to do with writing tools. Let's go ahead and jump inside of notes. So here I just have some fake text. This is like an example email. And if I go ahead and select all of this text and click on writing tools, this is where we will see our first change. So we can actually describe whatever change we wanna make in plain text. Before in iOS 18.1, you could only choose between some of these pre-chosen options, such as proofread or friendly or professional. But now you can actually type in what exactly you want changed to this text. So I'll say, make this longer and more professional. And if I click on send, it's going to take a couple seconds to make that change. And as you can see, it listened to me and it made it professional and it made it a lot longer. This is really, really cool. And I think it brings you a lot more control to what changes you want to make to your text. But it doesn't stop there. We also have another really cool feature for writing tools. And this allows you to write text with no starting point. So here again, inside of notes, if I click on the writing tools button and then scroll down, you can see we have a new option called Compose, and this is using ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is always going to be free and unlimited for iPhone users. However, it is going to use the older model of ChatGPT if you reach your limit. So I believe I've reached my limit, so it's gonna use the older model. But what's really cool is that you can sign in to ChatGPT if you have an account and if you pay for premium. So inside of settings, if I go back here, click on Apple Intelligence, then scroll down and click on chat GPT. And then here you can choose to sign into your account if you want to. So if you're paying that 20 or 25 bucks a month for premium, you can now extend this into iOS and get all of those features for chat GPT. But let's hop back into notes and I'll show you exactly how this feature works. So if you want to compose some text using chat GPT, it's pretty much just like the application itself. So I'll say, make me a, make me a dinner invite and click on send. It might request more information because that was very vague. Let's go ahead and see what it can make. 
So here, just like this, it made us a dinner invite. And then down here, it's giving us some suggestions. So add a theme to the dinner invite, include a menu preview, or specify a dress code. This is really, really cool. And uh, you can definitely tell that it's ChatGPT writing it compared to Apple Intelligence because the style is a little bit different. But if you want to choose to use this, it definitely is cool that ChatGPT is baked right into iOS now. However, that is not where the integration with ChatGPT ends because ChatGPT now works with Siri. And because of this integration, I believe Siri is now finally the really useful personal assistant that Apple has promised us for years. So now you can ask Siri anything, and if it doesn't know the answer, it's gonna go ahead and ask ChatGPT, which pretty much means that you can now ask Siri anything. There is one toggle that I want you to turn off though, which is gonna make the experience a lot better. So here inside of Apple Intelligence and Siri, scroll down and click on ChatGPT. And then here you wanna turn off confirm ChatGPT requests. If you have this turned on and it is by default, every time Siri reaches out to ChatGPT, you have to click at the very top of your screen, allow. If you do that every single time, it's gonna get very annoying. So simply turn this off and always allow your iPhone to access ChatGPT. But now that you have set this up, you're pretty much ready to go and you can ask your iPhone anything. So if your iPhone doesn't know the answer to something, it's gonna use ChatGPT. However, you can force it to use ChatGPT by starting your conversation by saying, ask ChatGPT. Ask ChatGPT for a simple recipe for lemon chicken. And you can see here it says working with ChatGPT and in a matter of a few seconds, it's gonna give me a recipe with instructions just like this. And then if you wanna take this text and bring it somewhere else, you can click the button on the top right and copy it to your clipboard. And then because it is ChatGPT, you can ask it pretty much anything even though you're being vague and it's gonna know the answer because it is a lot smarter than Siri. Ask ChatGPT who is that one actor in the new movie on Apple TV? And then even though I was very vague, it knew exactly what movie I was talking about. So this is really, really cool. So with ChatGPT integration in Siri on my iPhone, I can definitely say now that Siri is very, very useful. And I am so glad to say that when you ask your iPhone something, you are never going to hear, here is what I found on the web ever again. So thank God for that. But this is not where the AI features end. We also have a few other kind of fun things I wanna show you. The first one is exclusively for the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro if you have the camera control button. So in iOS 18.2, if you press and hold on the button, not just press the button, it's gonna bring you into what is called visual intelligence. This essentially allows you to do an image search on Google or with ChatGPT. So if I bring in a plant like this and then take a photo of it, once you take the photo, you have an option to ask ChatGPT or search the web. So if I search the web, it's gonna pretty much do a reverse image search on Google and tell me some information about that just like this. And then the other button is ask ChatGPT. So if I click on this, it's gonna upload the photo to ChatGPT and it's gonna give me an analyzation of what it believes is in the photo. And then if you have any other questions, you can keep typing to ChatGPT and it's gonna always remember the original photo that you uploaded. So for example, I can say, uh, does it need water? And if I click on send, it's gonna give me an answer just like this. iOS 18.2 also includes an all new application called Image Playground. I believe this is where the AI gets a little bit gimmicky, but I'll show you what it looks like and you can make up your own mind. So here is what the icon is. It looks like a cat or an animated cat. In my opinion, this is one of the worst icons Apple has ever made. And inside of the app, I also think it's one of the worst apps ever, just because it really doesn't do anything and it's kind of a gimmick. You can see here, you can make people into AI avatars. Here's my brother, here's me, here's my girlfriend. That's pretty much all it does. When you click on the plus button, you can choose a person and then different themes. So I'll choose myself, even though I cringe every time I do it. And then I'll say a volcano and a city and an astronaut. So once you go to a few prompts, it's gonna make an image 
And then that really doesn't look that bad. However, I just don't know when I would ever use an image like this. At the bottom, you can choose what person is in your photo and you can also choose the original photo that it's basing the AI image off of. So if you don't like the way you look, you can choose your main photo and it's gonna base all of your AI created photos off of that one photo. And again, you can choose any person in your library. You don't just have to click those prompts as you saw me doing at the beginning. So if you click on plus, you can actually describe an image down here at the bottom. So I'll just say me playing hockey and let's see if it can do something. So just like this, it looks like this is me on an ice rink. What I've noticed about this is it always gives you just your avatar from the chest up. So even though I'm apparently playing hockey in this image, I would never know because it never really shows what my legs or feet are doing. Another feature in iOS 18.2 is called Image Wand. This, I believe, is going to be a little bit more useful than Image Playground. So this allows you to turn a sketch into an AI generated image. Now I've never actually tried this on my iPhone. I wanna do this in real time. So if there's any bugs or any glitches, you can see it with me and experience it just the way Apple has made it. So if I go ahead and grab the pen tool, uh, let's, let's choose this pen to draw the house. So I'll draw a basic house like this. I'll put a roof on it. Don't judge my drawing skills. Put the door, I'll put a chimney. And I think that's good. So now if I go ahead and grab the wand down here and I circle my image with the wand, the AI should pick it up. Now it looks like I have to describe it. So let's say house and then done. So it's gonna use my drawing and the word house to make something. So it looks like, well, it's actually not that bad. It made a house and there's the chimney I made too. So this is actually pretty cool. If you wanna turn your basic horrible sketches inside of notes into an AI made image, you can do this with the image wand. And then the final AI feature in iOS 18.2 is called Genmoji. This is kind of similar to Image Playground. However, I think this is going to be used a little bit more by the average person because the average person uses emojis a lot more, uh, for example, when they're inside of iMessage. So when you are viewing your emoji keyboard, there's gonna be a new button here at the right side. And if you click on this, it's gonna bring you into Genmoji. Whenever you see this uh, sort of rainbow glow, this is how you know you're doing something with AI. So here it says, start with a few words or a phrase that best describes your idea. So I will say, Michael with a tennis racket. And if I click on send, it'll take a few moments and it's gonna make the emoji and hopefully it's gonna look like me with a tennis racket. And actually this doesn't look that bad. So if you click on it, it'll input it into your text field. It looks a little bit small. However, the good news is whenever you create a Genmoji, it is going to save it to your emoji keyboard down here. So here are a few other ones I made. Uh, this is a monkey that has some presents. Uh, this one looks like my mom in a Christmas sweater. And uh, it's just kind of fun to make your own emojis. And I have been using this a lot more than the image playground. So that was every new feature in iOS 18.2. And as you've been able to tell throughout the entire video, this really is a pretty large update. I think this is what Apple wanted iOS 18.1 to be. However, none of the features were ready. So we had to wait until December. It's literally almost 2025. And Apple was previewing this way back in June, but we finally have it today. So you can go ahead and update your phone right now and start enjoying all of these features I showed you in this video. If you guys found this video informative or helpful, entertaining, anything, please drop a like and also leave your comments down below telling me what you thought. With all that said, my name is Michael. Make sure to get subscribed for more videos like this in the future and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.